Welcome everyone to our webinar today, a Season uh, Speaks, a virtual series. Thank you for joining us today for this month's topic, Dementia Inclusivity and Memory Care in Retirement Communities. I'm Stephanie Sanborn, the Director of Education and Innovation for Seasons, and I'll be your presenter today, one of your presenters and your host. For background, Seasons is a Canadian retirement home operator that was established in 2009. We operate 22 retirement communities in Ontario and Alberta, with more in progress. We have proudly created a culture that's dedicated to providing residents with superior customer service. We also want our residents to be proud to call us home and know that they're surrounded by people who genuinely care. During today's presentation, Jessica will discuss statistics of dementia today in Canada and why retirement living is a great option. She'll also walk through ORCA's Dementia Inclusive Initiative, the key to dementia inclusive communities. I will then cover the background and future of our memory care program at Seasons Retirement Communities. During our presentation, we highly encourage you to submit your dementia and memory care questions in the Q&A feature on the menu bar. We will end today's webinar with a live Q&A session where we'll be able to answer your submitted questions. Hello everyone, it's an honor and pleasure to be here. Well, to help with the context of our discussion, it might be helpful to understand the current landscape in Canada. So let's go over some of those interesting stats and see if you got the polling question right. So according to the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, Today, over 500,000 Canadians are living with dementia. Every year, approximately 25,000 Canadians are diagnosed with dementia. Out of those individuals, 65% are over the age of 65, and many of them are women. One in five Canadians also have experienced caring for someone living with dementia. And for those, for most of you, you got it right, it's estimated that by 2030, approximately 912,000 Canadians will be living with some form of dementia. Over the years, I've had the good fortune of working with, very closely with people living with dementia. And when you ask people living with dementia, what are some of their concerns after getting diagnosed? They may say fear of losing their independence or control, fear of losing their social connections and not fitting in or being accepted, or fear of being a burden to their family as their condition progresses and changes. It's important to know that life doesn't stop after being diagnosed with dementia. In fact, if you ask many people living with dementia, like my good friend, Mary Beth Whiten, she's a person living with dementia and a dementia advocate, she'll tell you exactly that. With the proper supports in place, and having care partners who have a good understanding of dementia. People with dementia can continue to live a good and very fulfilling life. So you may ask, why are people living with dementia choosing to move into retirement communities? Well, some would probably say they would want to live in a community that they have, number one, access to trained staff staff who understand the different types of dementias and know how to deliver person-centered care, staff who are willing to adapt and flex their approach to the person's unique needs and life patterns. Number two, they may say access to amenities and services to help them to live well, especially if and when traveling becomes difficult. Number three, access to a safe and secure living environment with health professionals available in the event, extra support is needed. And lastly, another common reason people are choosing to move into retirement communities is the opportunity to be part of a community and to connect with people who may share similar life experiences. So for those who may be wondering, what does a dementia inclusive community look like and feel like? Well, imagine a place where people living with dementia are understood, respected, and supported, have choice and control in their own daily lives, and have opportunities for meaningful engagement. They're seen as active contributors and valued members of their community. In a dementia-inclusive community, people are aware and have a clear understanding 
that if you know one person living with dementia, you know one person living with dementia. Lastly, in a dementia inclusive community, everyone knows that they play an important role in busting stigma and creating a better world for people living with dementia and all those who care and support them. And the best part, they know how to foster it. As you heard earlier, there's a growing number of people being diagnosed with dementia. And over the years, we have seen more and more people with dementia moving into retirement communities. So in response to this growth in 2016, ORCA struck a dementia task force to join this dementia inclusive movement that's happening globally and including in Canada. ORCA's task force includes broad and exceptional representation from the sector. It also includes people living with dementia, family members, and community partners listed on screen. For me, and I know many of my dementia task force colleagues, this movement is super exciting and hopeful but it's also deeply personal. As with many immigrant families, my parents and I didn't have many of our relatives living close by. However, luckily for me, I had a family friend come into my life when I was a child. I called her Grandma Manning. Grandma Manning was a well-respected nurse in our community. She had worked in healthcare for many, many years before retiring. She was by my side throughout my childhood, and yes, she even tolerated my teenage years. To me, Grandma Manning was warmth, love, safety, and home. She was a very important person in my life. When I was in high school, though, Grandma Manning unfortunately experienced a stroke that left her paralyzed on one side of her body. She had a hard time speaking, eating, and even had troubles with her mobility. Soon after her stroke, she moved into a long-term care home. I would go in almost weekly to visit her. And I'll tell you, one of the most fascinating things that I observed was how staff members' attitudes toward her changed. I saw firsthand how stigma could shape the way people interacted with her and cared for her. And that's why I am so thrilled that many retirement communities are voluntarily participating in ORCA's Dementia Inclusive Initiative, just like Seasons. These retirement communities are committed to continuously learning and adopting best practices and ideas. It absolutely warms my heart. So I'm guessing right about now you may be asking, how did ORCA get started? First, we made sure we did our homework. To better understand the sector's needs and to determine how ORCA could assist, ORCA alongside our Dementia Task Force members engaged in a number of, acti of uh, activities that helped to inform the development of resources that would educate, encourage, and inspire meaningful change. We launched a survey to understand how prevalent was stigma in retirement communities. We conducted many, many site visits and interviewed residents and family and team members and asked them what they felt was important in a dementia inclusive community. We even reviewed the legislations and the regulations. Based on all of this information that we collected, ORCA and the task force set out a vision for the future. We identified common principles needed in a supportive, enabling and inclusive community. And we also identified a number of educational and operational resources that would help retirement communities take steps towards fostering a more dementia inclusive community and help augment existing dementia education that many of these retirement communities already had in place. Once we were done creating all of those resources, we pilot tested them with some of our members to ensure that they were helpful and effective. And I am so proud to say that we saw great result, results during that pilot testing. And in around late 2019, we officially rolled out our dementia inclusive resources on ORCA's online learning platform. And it's available to all of our retirement community members, leaders, team members, volunteers, and students. So let's take a quick look at all of these resources that we created. 
So the first resource the task force developed was an introductory guide. This guide is intended for leaders to develop a greater understanding of dementia, discover some of the common myths and misperceptions about dementia, learn more about the global inclusive dementia movement, and it also highlights the important role that education plays in fostering inclusion and a sense of belonging. We also created a dementia inclusive reflection checklist, which is meant to be a helpful tool for leaders to reflect on the current state of their community. What's in place now that's supportive and helpful to people living with dementia, and what else could retirement communities be, do, be doing to enhance what they have in place? One of the best ways to combat dementia-related stigma and to build awareness is to help people who are not living with dementia get a glimpse of, get a glimpse of what it's like to live with dementia from the shoes of someone who's living with it. So knowing this, Orca developed a short video based on the life of a retirement home resident by the name of Olive. Olive lives with dementia. Let's take a quick look at this video. Hello, my name is Olive. I'm 81 years young and I am one of 500,000 Canadians living with dementia. But I'm living well with dementia. When I was diagnosed, I had to learn about dementia, but as I now know, everyone could learn a lesson or two to understand the disease. From independent to assisted living to full memory care, all communities have a resident who lives with some sort of cognitive impairment. With dementia, everyone's story is different. And this one is mine. Like you, I wake up each morning with my hopes for the day. Yes, I'm a little older now and probably a little slower, but not much. You see me running around every day I love being alive and I still enjoy the little things in life. For instance, making a cup of tea, enjoying the view, spending time with my family and friends, and doing all kinds of things that I can help with. My doctor told me I had probable Alzheimer's. It's a type of dementia. As you can imagine, the diagnosis scared me and it scared my family. At first, I would just forget where I was going. I would get confused driving to places I have been many times before, like my sister's house, just 10 minutes away from my own home. Making plans became difficult for me. Times, the dates, the locations, sometimes names. Details would escape me. They often slipped away in my mind before I could use them. As you can tell, I'm an independent woman. I take care of myself, but after my diagnosis, I didn't feel safe living alone anymore. So I moved into a retirement home shortly after. One of the things that scared me most was the worry that people would see only the dementia part and not me, not the real me. All of you see, with dementia, it's the stigma that hurts the most. There are so many myths, I wish people knew more. But luckily, I can tell you that my friends here know about dementia. You see, this is a dementia-inclusive retirement home. Can you imagine a whole community rallying around me? supporting and encouraging me and focusing on what I can do. The staff here are well trained and are very helpful. They're always finding ways to support me when I find something difficult. They send me reminders, show me the way sometimes, and they never make me feel different. It's true what they say. You meet one person with dementia, 
and that's all you have met, one person with dementia. I know dementia is a progressive chronic disease, but being in a community that supports me and my family like this helps me live life to the fullest. Everyone's story is different. Now you've heard mine. I'm Olive, and I am living well with dementia. Well, as you saw, I'm all of is filmed from a first person perspective, literally through her eyes. The I'm all of video tries to capture and more importantly, visually demonstrate the changes that someone with dementia may experience. Viewers get a glimpse of her hopes, her dreams, her fears, her needs, her preferences, and what makes all of unique. In the video, we also try to model and visually demonstrate a more person-centered and person-directed approach to care and support. At ORCA, we reviewed tons of research on empathy and good training design, and we know that meaningful change has a better chance of happening when we create opportunities for learners to put themselves in another person's shoes and to connect with how that person might be feeling about their circumstances or situations. And so that's how I'm all of video came to be. So besides viewing the I'm all of video, participants enrolled in ORCA's Dementia Inclusive Initiative must complete several e-learning modules. On screen, you see the first two. The first module is called Introducing the Dementia Inclusive Initiative. In this module, we share more information about this global movement that's happening, ORCA's commitment to this movement, and we also share some helpful tips on promoting communication and social interactions between residents. The second module is called Breaking Barriers and Promoting Relationships. This module speaks to facilitating awareness and how we can foster meaningful relationships. It also speaks about the importance of preventing stigma and how everyone can play a role, especially team members, to combat social isolation and loneliness for people living with dementia. This past April, ORCA released two new additional e-learning modules, and we developed these in partnership with the Schlegel University of Waterloo Research Institute for Aging. The tutorials are intended to help participants learn how to enhance the mealtime experience and how to better understand and support residents who may be expressing a need, a fear or concern or engage in a behavior that staff need to better understand from the resident's point of view. Since the launch of these modules in April, over 200 participants have viewed the modules. To help us better understand the impact of these educational resources, ORCA created uh, a pre and post training survey that we asked all participants to complete. And after reviewing all the results so far, and uh, we're so thrilled to share that we clearly see that the dementia inclusive educational resources that we've created have helped um, change people's understanding of dementia and dementia inclusivity. On screen, you see some of those uh, testimonials from participants. Since late 2019, altogether, almost 400 homes have taken part, including many of the season's retirement communities. And we're proud to share that we've reached over 8,600 individuals through this initiative, and we've only just started. So if I had to sum it up, there are many upsides of a dementia inclusive community. We believe at ORCA, our dementia inclusive initiative can help enhance the good practices we already see today in retirement communities. 
when we work together to build a dementia inclusive community, it leads to a better understanding of dementia, reduced stigma, more awareness and empathy. People's approaches are more respectful and responsive to the person's unique dementia journey. It leads to decreased social isolation of residents, more meaningful engagement and inclusion, and lastly, it leads to an enhanced quality of life and well-being for all those touched with dementia. We also found that when team members, volunteers, and students in retirement communities learned more about dementia and what role they could play, they reported feeling more confident in their abilities to provide good dementia care and support, and they also believed that they could help improve the resident experience all of which are great outcomes. Well, I hope you found that information helpful and I hope that you're just as excited as I am now about this wonderful movement that's happening in the retirement community sector. At Seasons Retirement Communities, we embrace the ORCA Dementia Inclusivity Platform across all of our, our homes. And at the, the outset of this webinar, I mentioned we had 22 retirement communities across Ontario and Alberta. We also have five uh, homes in the province of Ontario and five in Alberta that have designated uh, memory care areas for persons living with dementia. And so our homes in Amherstburg, LaSalle, Cambridge, St. Thomas, Milton, Brantford, Stony Creek, and Bowmanville in Ontario, and in Alberta in Camros, High River, Olds, Pinoca, and Drayton Valley all have a very specific designated area that is designed. And we're very thoughtful in our design. We want to ensure that the space is beautifully appointed, but also very residential, just like the rest of the community. We have every space has a lounge, dining rooms, dens, potting rooms, access to outdoor gardens and courtyards. And so what we know for sure is that the Alzheimer's Society of Canada and the Alzheimer's Association of the United States both agree that a person-centered approach is, should be at the core to any care that is delivered uh, in a senior's home setting for persons living with dementia. And we really believe at Seasons that all residents living with dementia have a right to live purposefully. We believe that each connection that we make with our residents throughout the day should be meaningful, personalized, which contributes to a sense of belonging for our residents. And at Seasons, we emphasize the importance of everyone adopting a culture of focusing on the person and building relationships, not just performing the, your tasks. So for us, developing meaningful relationships with our care partners enhances an intuitive understanding of the resident and their needs. And so this graphic is really our philosophy kind of in a nutshell, um, our philosophy is grounded in a promise that we talk about with our team members as soon as they're hired to, to promise to make every interaction as positive and meaningful each moment at a time. So we liken it to a tree in that the person-centered approach is really the root at the, in the core at everything we do in memory care. And the strength of who we are is really that, that trunk, the embrace today is is our brand, it's the lifeblood of our dedication and commitment to it. And so you can see with this graphic, there are five branches currently, and I'm just gonna take you through each branch of our philosophy. And the first one is training. We invest a lot of time and effort um, in our teams and their training when it comes to um, understanding dementia and the right approach and person-centered approach to, to dementia. We've also invested in creating a virtual reality dementia experience for our team so that they could have um, an experience of what it, they could feel like what it might be, feel like to have uh, dementia. The second branch is what we call pers purposeful connections. And we make every effort to make sure that our teams have the right tools to be able to connect in a personalized, meaningful way. An example being is collecting the life story of our residents so that we understand who they are and we can use that information throughout the day as we interact with our residents. The next branch is what we call reflective practice. 
And this really is all about ensuring that our teams have an opportunity um, to be mindful about their own daily interactions and to sit back and reflect on their own practice, their learning, and how they feel they're doing in their practice, ask questions. Um, and, and the more they take time to reflect, we know for sure, the research shows us that they grow exponentially, professionally as a caregiver. The other branch is called support gatherings and our support gatherings are basically get togethers for our families of our residents who live in memory care. And they're once a month, usually in the evening. And it's an opportunity for families to come together to share their experience, their challenges, their frustrations um, with each other and our team. We also have a support gathering for our team members where they can bring that, that reflective practice that they do through reflective journal writing to the support gatherings to talk again about their feelings, the challenges and frustrations that they're experiencing as well, as well. And finally, the final branch is what we say is enabling the environment. And this is how we ensure that the space is set for the day to encourage participation and maximum engagement. And the team is not, unhur is not hurried. It's a calm environment. Um, and we, we pay close attention to things like uh, TVs being turned on and loud and different noises um, and groups that are happening are usually small in size. And we do our best to make sure that, you know, we enable the space so that the residents can feel that they can succeed and their strengths can be enhanced. So we believe that through positive connections and meaningful interactions that occur all day long with our team members and our residents, it's our intention and hope that our residents will have a, a feel a, say, a sense of belonging and that they'll feel safe and have the opportunity to encourage and contribute to life on the floor. We try to ensure that the team has access to tools that encourage meaningful interactions and connections. And so just an example of one of the tools that we created is a Legacy Today book. And really, it's a book that's in every resident's room. And our team members will record if there's a really great experience that they're having or a meaningful interaction, they'll record it in this Legacy book. It's just a small example of a tool that we've developed to connect um, in a meaningful way with our residents and encourage our team to record some of those great quality moments. The entries in the books should be resident-centered, very specific to the life story and interests of our residents, and of course are left there to be shared with our, our care partners and family members. The Legacy Today book is also kind of um, a record of the meaningful interactions that we have with and the, and the experience and relationship that we have with our residents. And if the resident decides to move, then they get to take this uh, Legacy Today book with them. And the families can also see that when their mother, their father, their loved one is living with us, they've had still very meaningful quality moments uh, living with us at Seasons. One of the other things that we work um, in, uh, in partnership with our residents is we encourage our residents to contribute to the daily life and routine on the memory care floor. For example, our residents will assist with setting tables, sweeping the floor, folding towels, tending to the gardens if they so choose. Of course, if they don't want to do any of that, that's perfectly fine as well. But really it's our way of connecting together um, in our daily life on the floor. So th throughout the day, we also offer purposeful activities that contribute to the overall well-being of, of the residents. For instance, regular exercise programs, brain challenging games and programs, as well as mindfulness centered programs in the evening. At Seasons, we believe it's important to leverage technology and we'll continue to explore these opportunities that can enhance engagement. And we've incorporated things like digital brain games. We've piloted virtual reality with our residents. We've, we've also piloted social robots and memory care. Um, and, and we will continue to do that as we go forward into the future. Well, this is just a brief overview of our approach to care for persons living with dementia at Seasons Retirement. And in combination with the Dementia Inclusive Initiative that Jess shared with ORCA, we really believe that residents with dementia can thrive 
in retirement living communities and at Seasons Retirement Communities. So I just like to bring uh, Jess back. So I wanna thank Jess for walking us through the dementia uh, today and ORCA uh, inclusive initiative, the key to dementia inclusive communities. We hope that today's session has provided you with valuable insight to the knowledge around and expect what you can expect in dementia inclusive communities. And I hope it has familiarized you a bit with our person-centered memory care program embraced today at Seasons Retirement Communities. So the next part will be a live Q&A session. Some questions have come in. So if you haven't done so already though, please um, submit your questions in the Q&A option in the bottom menu bar and feel free to commit, uh, continue with the, um, the questions. So Jess, I think I see the first question is for you. Sounds good. Okay. so. Um, the first question is, how many retirement homes have participated in ORCA's Dementia Inclusive Initiative? Yeah, great question. About 300 retirement communities in Ontario have participated in it, and close to 100 retirement communities from Alberta, BC, and Saskatchewan have taken part. Kudos goes out to the season's retirement communities for also having great uptake. <laughs> great. I guess the next question is also for you, Jess. Based on your experience, what training have you found most useful for staff and family members to help them better understand what it's like to live with dementia? Yeah, great question. So in my humble opinion, training focused on the lived experience is the most helpful. When we look at traditional dementia training, it typically focuses on the changes in the brain, the different types of dementia and how it progresses. But I can't stress enough how important it is for everyone to be aware that each person diagnosed with dementia will have their own unique journey shaped by their own personal experiences that go beyond the symptoms associated with a changing brain. You know, the perfect example I have is Steph, if you were diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, how it plays out for you and how it plays out for me is gonna be completely different. Mm -hmm. It is so important that we don't paint everyone diagnosed with dementia with the same brush. And that's why I feel training focused on the lived experience is super helpful. Yeah, I would agree with you there. And, and in keeping with what you were just saying, the next question I think we both can answer a bit to is based on your experience, what training have you found most useful for staff and family members? Uh, to help them better understand what it's like to live with dementia. And so um, what, what I can say to that in, in at Seasons, we have shared the VR experience with some of our family members at their family gatherings. And it really has been eye-opening. And, and the VR experience is a 360 headset that you would put on and you would get a sense of what, it's a three minute experience of what a person living with dementia would see, hear, um, and, and you know, sense. Um, when someone approaches them. And so that kind of experience, like you're saying, this first person experience is important. It evokes empathy and understanding. But also I just wanna point out when it comes to training and education, there, there is wonderful education out there that's even three free through the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, the You First program that you can take. Um, as long as the training is rooted in person-centered care, like you saw in our tree, um, it's, it, it's, it's great. I mean, there are lots of different approaches to um, the training that's happening in different retirement communities, but the majority of them are all rooted in person-centered care. So I would encourage any family members who are on um, the webinar today that if, it's, if you see it's rooted in person-centered care, um, then, then go ahead with the training. And there's a lot of free stuff. Also through McMaster University has some free education that you can take. And uh, so, just, so just to, go ahead. Hmm. Just to build on that, if people are interested in watching the I'm All a video or sharing it with other people, just go on to Orca's website and click on our Dementia Inclusive Initiative. You know, when we've shared the I'm All a video in conferences and presentations beyond just our education training that we offer, people have found it super helpful because, again, it's coming from the point of view of someone who's living with dementia. And, and there's just so much power to that. 
Right. And so uh, this is a great question here from Deborah. She's saying that all of appears to be in an independent living area. It says at Seasons, but that was not videotaped at Seasons. That was an Orca a video, but um, which is very different from a memory care area. Um, can people who, uh, who are in memory care be transferred to independent living section? So what I would say to you, Deborah, is um, dementia inclusivity is, you know, we acknowledge that you know, a high percentage of some seniors have some cognitive de decline and live in our independent area. So as I mentioned at Seasons, we believe in leveraging technology. So we do our best to, in the, in the independent side to leverage technology where, um, and we see that as the future to help, um, you know, our residents stay as independent um, as possible and, and are embraced. And if there comes a point though, where living in independent living can either become overwhelming for them or they're not, it's not best suited for their strengths, um, then they can transfer into memory care. And it's just a smaller area. It looks exactly the same as independent living. Um, it's just a smaller area where the, the environment is just more calm and quiet. Um, and the approach is a little bit uh, unhurried and different with our residents um, in memory care. And so we have another question here from Judy. Um, sorry, I just, how do you dispel a client's fear of being institutionalized? Their own uh, stigma carried from past medical care. That's a great question. Do you, want to do you want to tackle that a bit, Jess? Or? Uh, I'll try my best. That is such a great question. Again, you know, what, as I said earlier, a lot of the dementia training out there is rooted in that medical model that you, Judy, alluded to. And so with a medical model of dementia or understanding of dementia, it, it's focused on deficit decline and dysfunction. So it creates a lot of fear and misperceptions. So I think the first thing to do is to acknowledge that fear and, and misperceptions and to offer a new perspective. Um, when you also engage with other people living with dementia who are living well, it changes their perceptions. I only know this because I've had the good fortune, as I mentioned earlier, working with lots of people living with dementia. And when they come together, it's fascinating that they talk about how with the proper supports they can live well, with you know, opportunities to learn more about what can be possible, it helps them to challenge those deeply rooted perceptions that uh, we have formed. Right. A lot of it has to do with the media as well. Right, and I would say that word that Judy wrote, institutionalized, and, and that is definitely, um, you know, I would encourage people to go and visit retirement homes because it really isn't that, that picture you have in your head either. Um, often, it, when you hear about retirement home, you think institutionalized or a care facility. And so, um, again, ORCA and most of the operators uh, in retirement living have beautiful buildings that feel like apartment buildings that offer services to seniors and older adults. Um, so I, I think going and actually um, experiencing what it feels and looks like might be helpful. There are a couple of other questions. We only have a minute left, but I do think they're important questions I wanted to um, I wanted to address about how would one be diagnosed with dementia so from, from Helen. And so Helen, what I would say to you is that um, your loved one or, would go to the doctor and they, there are tests that, um, you know, mini mental tests or MOCA tests that, it, that could detect mild cognitive impairment. They call it MCI. They're, they're tests that are used that can detect mild cognitive impairment, which really doesn't necessarily mean that that will lead down the road to full dementia, but you really should see a physician, there are tests that they, easy tests that they do. Um, and, and once you know you have mild cognitive impairment or some kind of dementia, you can set your life up and set the supports up that you need for sure. Um, and so what's the next question I, I wanted to, I, I saw um, from Cheryl and it was important. Cheryl said that I find that my mother doesn't like to leave the retirement home anymore. She was, all, she was always so active and social. Is this normal for someone with dementia? And so um, Cheryl, what I can say to that is for us at Seasons, and I, I'm sure um, 
uh, Jess, we're going to wrap up, but I'm sure that Jess would also say in her experience, it really is about the individual. We wouldn't have an answer. Um, uh, it, it, we really do look at the individual and our care partners. We work hard at making sure that we have um, service plans that address um, what is underlying, what are the reasons behind why your mother is feeling that? What, what, what is, is there an underlying fear? Are there triggers for her? And so the team could sit down and really try to figure out what is the, what is the unmet need that maybe is contributing to her not wanting to leave. Um, I hope that's been helpful. If I could just quickly yeah. add, you know, earlier someone said, well, how can we change that institutionalized perspective? Here's the thing, you know, I've talked to my parents and my in-laws about moving into our retirement community as they figure out their life plans for, for uh, the next several years. And I'll mm -hmm. say this, right? Today, retirement communities are very good at providing dementia care and they're eager to continuously do better and be better. Um, and so if anyone was to ask me, should I move my mom to a retirement home? I would say yes. I am confident that retirement communities are a great place to live and to live well. So I just wanted to share that thought too. Uh, I guess we, we need to conclude today's session. I want to thank you for joining us for season speak of virtual series and a big thank you to Jessica for joining us today. Really appreciate um, your support, Jess, and all the work that you do at Orca. If you're interested in getting in touch with us and for more information or to book your tour, please visit our website at seasonsretirement.com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook, at Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And be sure to click like or follow to get the latest updates for our next Season Speaks webinar in July. And we hope to connect with you soon. Thank you everyone for coming and being so engaged. Take care, goodbye everyone.